Good morning. I hope you had a good night, short or long, maybe. Um, yeah, specification pattern, or the whole title is Boost Up Your Code with Specification. So, how you can improve your code base with specifications. So, speci what are specifications? Um, let's tackle first the problem. In a normal project, or if you put some micro framework together, uh, whatever, you have an ORM, your object, object relational mapper. Anyone using, not using an ORM? Okay. Not doctrine, not eloquent? Okay. Yeah. Object relational mapper is, it maps a PHP object to a database table. Okay, that's easy. So let's define our example model for today. We want the class Unicorn. It has an ID, and it has a name, it has a color. Of course, it has a birth date. It needs an age. It could have a laser horn, or maybe it poops rainbows, or it can fly like the unicorns by jolly coats. Um, yeah, that's a simple model. A unicorn class, the ORM configuration is not shown because it's not necessary. So this model is mapped to this database table definition by doctrine, eloquent, whatever. It's easy. You have your date, you have your tiny int, your boolean. So this is Klaus, our unicorn for today. Klaus, what does Klaus? He's white, is it? And he can fly and he can poop rainbows. So greater instance of Klaus. A new unicorn, name it Klaus, it's white, of course, it's 30 years old. Sadly, it has not a laser horn, but it poops rainbows and it flies. Okay, that's Klaus. Let's save it to the database and we have Klaus. And that's the magic of an ORM. But if you're using an ORM and look back at the properties Klaus has, flying, rainbow pooping, you need to search for unicorns. And for this, you have repositories. A repository is, in the whole definition, mediates between the domain object and data mapping layers using a collection like interface for accessing domain objects. Yeah, long sentence. It's a little bit unclear, a good definition, but what is a repository? It's a central class, of course. Your one class where you search for, with all defined by ID, defined by name, and so on, for your unicorns. And of course, you shouldn't use query builders, SQL access in your controllers, or anything else. This should be encapsulated by the repository. So, and you can reuse Gridiero code within. If you have multiple find by methods, you can combine them internally, reuse code. So, for example, you have a find one by ID. You could find Klaus by its ID number one. Or you could find Klaus by its name. We find one by name. Okay, another possibility would be find all unicorns by their color. Or find all unicorns by their herd. Maybe you want to find the upper herd or the lower herd. It depends. In this case, herd could be the instance, a herd name maybe. It doesn't matter in this case. Or you could find all rainbow pooping unicorns. Or find one by its herd and name. Maybe you're searching for Klaus, but you want to be sure it's in this lower herd. Or you want to find by herd and color, maybe all green unicorns in the upper herd. Or maybe find by color with laser horns. Or maybe find all flying ones. Who has counted how many metal methods I've defined? Nobody? <laughs> Too early in the morning? <laughs> okay. Our around nine methods. And if you want to find by flying or find all flying rainbow pooping unicorns, every time you need another search criteria, you have to create another method. And so your repository grows and grows and grows. It gets big. It's a mess to maintain. That's the real problem with ORM and repositories if your model is too big. So with specifications, 
you can tackle this problem. You can tame your repositories with the specification pattern. And another long definition, the central idea of a specification is the, to separate the statement of the how to match the candidate, our unicorn model, from the candidate object, our name, whatever. Long definition, too much words. So what are specification? Specification is a class and they are composable. You can combine them like a simple if. Specifications are reusable. You can reuse a specification. Not, you don't need to rewrite your code. You simply reuse the specification. And specifications are testable. They are a small unit of test. So again, we want to find awesome unicorns. Awesome unicorns, yeah, it's not best readable. Awesome unicorns can fly like clouds, can poop rainbows, and the fur is white. That's an awesome unicorn. So great, we want to create a specification class for an awesome unicorn. It's easy. We simply define an awesome unicorn class which implements our specification interface. The specification interface has one method, is satisfied by. Is satisfied by gets in this case the unicorn instance and we can simply test if a unicorn can fly, if a unicorn poops rainbows, and if a unicorn, if the color of the unicorn is white. It's a simple if which is returned. This is testable. It's really easy to mock a unicorn instance, feed it to the awesome unicorn specification and test it with PHP unit. It's reusable, but only on a unicorn instance. It's not reusable on a turtle. And it's not composable. Because the result is only a Boolean. Of course, you could compose it outside with an another if, but we want a clean composable interface. So we add some methods like and x, where we combine with an and specification, or or x, where we combine with an or specification, and we can negate two. So now it's testable and it's fully composable on the specification level. So you don't have a big if where you combine specifications, if a specification and call and x, so you have a clean code base which is naturally readable. You have new yeah, you have new awesome unicorn and youngster and laser horn, not yeah, okay. There's a little bit not nice but and not laser horn. You have to read it forward, backwards, middle. But that's okay. It's really good readable. You create a new awesome unicorn, you combine it with the youngster specification, and you combine it with a laser horn, not. Yeah. So you have a resulting specification which can be tested by against the unicorn instance, and now you know is this unicorn instance an awesome young unicorn or not. If it has a laser horn, it would be a mega awesome unicorn. But in this case, we are not testing against a laser horn. That's easy. The pros of this specification is they are solid. They are separated, they are unit test able, and they are compose able. That's fine. You have one small class, you have multiple small classes, and so on and so on. There are some cons, it could be clearer. Of course, you have this big if, if unicorn it can fly and unicorn color is white and so on. And it's only usable on a unicorn instance, as I said. You cannot reuse it on a turtle. And for this, you can use rulers. It's a really awesome library and it's created in France. So <laughs> I'm here from Austria presenting to you a library created in France. That's cool. <laughs> so simply install it with Composer. That's it. Composer require Kafin rulers and go on. The features of this library, it has a data agnostic domain specific language to express this business rule. You are not creating, you are not longer creating a big return statement with and and or. You have a business language for these rules. It works on the instance level. So as seen before with the unicorn instance and now you can query directly on the data source level. 
You don't want to get all your unicorns from the database and filter them in PHP. That's memory hungry. So first, let's create a rulers engine. For this, you need a file compiler. Rulers uses the HOA compiler. It's also from France. And either you let use the temp deer or you define your own cache deer. Recommended define your own cache deer because you need to clean it if you change something. And then create a new real rulers instance with the compiler. Say we want to filter doctrine query builders and we want to filter array build arrays with the array visitor. Okay, that's all to get a rulers instance. Now, if you're using Symfony, it's even more easy. Require the rulers bundle, activate the doctrine, query builder, visitor, or executor. The array visitor is enabled by default, but all other visitors, you have to enable them in the config. And simply get the rulers from the container. That's really easy. And now, if we have a rulers instance, you can write your business rule. In this case, it looks like SQL. It's easy. Is it readable? Not really. Okay. Yeah, can fly is true, and poops rainbows is true, and color is prepared parameter color. So we are asking the rulers engine if the unicorn instance satisfies this rule. And because color is a prepared parameter, we are supplying the prepared parameter. Okay, in this case it's always white, but for the example, prepared statements, you should use them. Don't concatenate the string with input from the user. Okay, that's the same rule as before, but in your business language. And as it looks like SQL, it's really easy to know the language. But this rule is outside of a specification class. But we had a specification class before, so let's create again an awesome unicorn specification class. In this case, it extends the abstract specification. This is supplied by rulers. You could also implement the specification interface on your own, but the abstract specification already has the compose methods, like and, or, and not. So we define the rule again in get rule method, and then we have a get parameters for the prepared parameters. In this case, it's still static, white, color is white, but as seen, we have a data agnostic domain specific language to express our business rule. Our business rule is the awesome unicorn. And that's nice. You create your class, but in the class, you create a domain specific language which everyone can understand. So if you have a new dev in your team and you set them before the specification, he looks at it and he understands it because it's like SQL. No problems to introduce new devs into specifications. It's easy. So the usage is the same. You still create a new awesome unicorn specification, combine it with a youngster and combine it with laser horn not. But this time you are asking rulers if the unicorn instance satisfies the specification. Okay, it works on the instance level. But as I said before, you don't want to get a million records from the database. So now you create a query builder from Doctrine, if you're using Doctrine. If not, imagine your favorite ORM or your favorite PDO instance. <laughs> um, we select the unicorn with our unicorn model. And simply now we can ask rulers if the spec with now we can simply ask rulers to filter this query builder with our specification we have created before. So rulers applies the creates the SQL, applies it to the query builder, and fetches all the unicorns which are matching against this specification from the database. So in this case, we may get 10 unicorns. That's effective. You don't affecting your, the performance of your app. Okay, so it works on the data source level. Both is true, with the instance level and with the data source level. And that's awesome. You can reuse your specification, the same specification class on an array and of the objects of your model and on the data source directly. To reuse able the specification, in this case we have a name specification to find clouds and a rain poop pooping spec 
to find clouds which can poop rainbows, not find all clouds. Clouds is a common name, so maybe we have 100 unicorns which are named clouds. But we only want to get those clouds which can poop rainbows. Okay, now we filter them from the database. Now we get the herd clouds is in and filter again. In this herd, there's a collection of unicorns with different properties against if they can poop rainbows. So we find all rainbow pooping unicorns in the herd of clouds with rulers. We have simply used the rainbow pooping spec above against the data source and below against the collection of the herd. So it's really reusable on every array of objects, array of array, query builder instance of a unicorn. But it's also reusable on different instances, on different models. You have a name spec. In this name spec, you are only asking for the name. So you can reuse it on unicorns. You can filter unicorns against this name. So you find all unicorns named Klaus, or you can filter with the same specification the same specification instance two in this case against all turtles to find all turtles which are named Klaus. And that's fine. So your specifications are not only reusable on the instance and data source level, they are also reusable on every other model. Of course, it needs a clear database design because when we look into reusability, our name spec is filtering against the name attribute. So all the models you want to filter should have the name attribute. Not the turtle should not be called name2 or a title or anything. So you need a clear database or a model architecture. If you want to reuse your specification in your app against different models, you need to de design carefully. Of course, in this example, the name is supplied by constructor, not shown. So seen the unicorn and the turtle have the same name property on the model. That's important if you want to use specifications. If you want to introduce specifications in a legacy app, it may not work the best. For a new app, design it clearly and you're blazingly fast with filtering and querying. Um, another cool fun feature of rulers is custom function. For example, I have an age spec to filter the age of a unicorn or of a turtle or whatever which has a birth date on its model. I've created an age parameter. I don't want to hassle with date times, so I simply supply the age, 30 years, 15 years, 4 years, whatever, into the age spec, so you don't have to hassle with date times. This is done by our custom function age. So, a scene with age spec, and birth date is not lower, it's, <laughs> sorry, yeah, the birth date comparison with the age, don't get it wrong, because then you get all unicorns which are older than, yeah, so, and of course the age is from the constructor, and custom functions must be defined for every configured executor. We have a doctrine query builder executor and with an array executor, so I have to create the custom age function two times. Let's create it. So, in the first case, I have my, I have my array age operator. Um, I use invoke because rulers only expects a callable, but I want to have a clear class, which is testable. So, simply use invoke, supply the age, and then the date time magic. I simply create a new date time instance with minus the age years, and that's all. We supply these array age operator to the array visitor. We name it age, that's the array key, and a new instance of the array age operator. That's easy. Because it's executed on it's executed lazy on the filtering then. For the doctrine query builder visitor, it's a little bit complicated because you have to write your doctrine query language in the operator. So if you create a new operator, you have to know your executor, how it works, what it uses, 
And in this case, our doctrine H operator uses a string with dates up of the current date minus, in this case, sadly months, because doctrine doesn't support years in date subtractions, so I have to multiply it with 12 and subtract the current date with 12 times the years of months. And now, we're defining this doctrine age operator on the, yeah, the doctrine query builder visitor. And now we set an inline operator that's really important to know your executors, where you, you have to either set an operator or an inline operator. An inline operator means the resulting string from above is directly put into the other queries. And now, yeah, supply the doctrine visitor to the rulers engine. So it's easy to create a custom corporator, operator, not a corporator, sorry. But you have to know your executors. But it's cool, you can have a gray age, you can have length, you can have any complicated operator. For the array visitors, you can have even an operator which calls a service, another service if you want. And another cool feature is joins. For example, a Hertz spec, a Hertz specification, as a rule which means you are filtering against the name of the herd from the unicorn. So if you look at herd.name is the name, if it's readable, is it readable? Okay, so herd is a property of the unicorn and the herd has a name property. So you are filtering all unicorns which are in the herd atoms, for example. So we get Klaus atoms and so on. But joins are only detected on the doctrine ORM executor. So if you're using Laravel with the eloquent ORM, it's not possible. Maybe if you are fancy enough, you can submit a pull request to support Laravel jo automatic join detection. But most of the cases, it is project is used in doctrine projects. So that's the reason why we have an automatic join detection for doctrine. Um, Let's take a look under the hood. So this is the whole architecture of rulers. We have a compiler, which is created by HOA compiler library. It's a really cool library. Um, our business rule is passed into an intermediate representation. And this intermediate representation is compiled, town, compiled to plain PHP code. So if you have have worries about the performance of rulers, don't worry. Because, for example, our rule can fly, our awesome Unicorn specification is compiled down to this PHP class, which you can see on the target, it's tested can fly and so on. The target is our Unicorn instance and with the array access operator, the target is robbed in a special property access proxy, I could say. So you don't see method access here, you see a simply array access in the compiled down, but as seen, every rule gets compiled down to plain PHP code for every executor, of course. This is the doctrine view of our Hertz specification. In this case, you see our detected joins, which is Hertz, the Hertz join, and it's the rule, the doctrine query language returned is Join alias with dot name is the prepared statement name. So it's easy. It's real performant. You don't have to worry about the performance of your app if you're using rulers. And the most important of rulers, the available targets. You can filtering array of arrays, so you don't have to. You don't need to have a model or an object to filter. You can still filter multi-dimensional arrays too. So fetch all unicorns with plain PDO. It's also possible to filter them afterwards. But of course, you filter array of objects too. And you can filter on the doctrine or M query builders directly. Or if anyone is using POM, it's also possible to use it. Of course, Laravel's eloquent ORM, and you can also filter on Elasticsearch or Solar. So your specifications are 
reusable on Elasticsearch and Solar too. So if you are caching your big database in Elasticsearch, you can first filter with your specification against Elasticsearch. And you, if you have n no results, you filter with the same specification, with the same rules against the database. And that's real cool. Or you can build your own one. We have to because we, have, we are using in our old projects a self-made, house-made model mapper. So I have created a, my own visitor to support this. It's easy if your own data source is like SQL. You can extend a generic SQL visitor, but you can also build a target for example GraphQL or Twitter search API if you are fancy. <laughs> and if you need it. But you can fi filter anything. You can imagine if you create your own visitor. Um, I have a few use cases for you. This is the repository before. We have stepped through. We have many find one by, find by methods. And this is the repository after. Only one method, which is called matching against our specification. We create a query builder, and we filter with ruler C against the specification. No more mess in your repository. A simple matching method where you can filter against all possible specifications you can create. Of course, this is simple as fuck, but if you have one million unicorns in the database, it's not that performant. So we have a new method, apply filter spec, which takes your query builder and your specification, but doesn't execute the query on Doctrine. It still returns another query builder. We've extended with our specification query. Now I can set my first result and set my max results and use a paginator from Doctrine. So if I have a one million unicorns in the database, that's not a problem anymore. I simply use apply filters back and get my 100 unicorns and the next 100 unicorns and so on and so on with pagination from Doctrine. Um, another use case is search forms. A search form from our customer. Can you read it? It's from Retailer Search. On the upper side I have a country and I have a country region like France and Paris. Uh, or I could search by zip code. Below, I could search by keywords, or on the right side, I could search by assortments, like agriculture, or purification. That's not French. OK, so each form field is one specification object, which means you create a country specification, you create a country zone specifi specification, you create a keyword specification, and every assortment checkbox is a assortment specification instance. And the spe special of these assortments is they are written by the customer. So you can still have a specification class, which is a database model on the same time. So the name and the rules is written by the customer. It's saved in the database. I get all those assortments from the database. And in the rule, I have a local part with the ID of this database record, and then I or I combine it with the rules from the customer. Of course, if you are saving these rules, you first have to check if the rules are valid. You need to use the validator. And yeah, if the customer didn't write rules, I simply return the local part. So if we go back, these assortments on the right side are created by the customer. So that's cool. You create for each form field, you create a specification, and you can write, you can let write the customer, even specifications too. Like Wallabag does. It's like, eh, it's Wallabag. It's cool to collect all your links you want to read later. You can tag it. The tags are not really readable. We have short reading. We have techno technology tags. And those tags can also be defined with rulers rules. In this case, the short reading tag is a rule. Reading time is lower equals than five. So anyone using Wallabag defined its own rules and it's 
used by rulers in the backend. So, yeah, that's really cool. Throw up your questions to me. <laughs> no questions so far? Anything clear? Ah, okay, one. <laughs> okay. Um, say I've developed uh, uh, an, OR, an ORM and I want to add um, an executor. Uh, I want to write it myself. How much time do you think I'm, I need for that? H how difficult is it? Um, it needs a bit more experience to create your own executor, but if you're creating an ORM, it's rather easy because you can extend the generic SQL visitor, which is a base class for all ORM executors. So you don't have to overwrite your visit operator or visit symbol, which are specific to your ORM query language. Um, you should ask an example of a custom uh, function like edge. Um, and you use, uh, you, you map that to a doctrine DQL language. Um, what about security in that? Uh, does the field, because you just use a sprintf to uh, put the value in the DQL, so is it like DQL uh, security under the, the layer which applied uh, if this field uh, uh, is coming from the user? Or is there uh, maybe an issue? In the <laughs> You're right. It's not that safe because the rule looks like it's a prepared statement, but in this case with the sprint f, it's not that safe. I have a in tagger casting, so any string is casted to zero years. It's a little bit more safe, but of okay. course I sh should check in the rule if the age is anything which should not go in the DQL. Okay, okay, thanks. Hi, and thanks. Um, in one of the slides, you show uh, get properties method that uh, returns an array with this age in a specification class. So does this mean that uh, this will be afterwards scoped into uh, the da data object? Um, this age in the specification are simply private properties of the specification class, okay. and you have to create a constructor to supply this into the in this specification. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs> For <laughs> if anything is unclear in the next hours, simply ping me on Twitter. Thank you.